I'm going to show you how to use Ableton Live Instruments in your Logic Pro 10 session. So first, open Logic Pro. The order that you open the application does matter. We'll be setting up Logic Pro as a rewire host to control Ableton. Our rewire is a built-in functionality of Logic. So we go to Logic Pro, Preferences, and Audio. Now, under this Audio tab, we're going to find Rewire Behavior at the bottom. Our options are playback mode and live mode. Live mode is going to have less latency and it's going to uh, use more of your CPU. Uh, playback mode is going to have a higher latency um, but use less CPU. If you have a powerful computer um, and it can handle it, then you probably want to use live mode. If it's a big project and you're running into some issues, maybe playback mode is going to be better for you. Press apply. And then we can close out of the preferences. Uh, now we're ready to start up Ableton Live. I'm using Ableton Live 10 Lite. This will work with any version of Ableton. Um, and I'm going to make a couple uh, instrument tracks um, using instruments from the instrument rack. So maybe the glass piano for the first one and say a uh, synth lead for the second one. Get keys. Okay, now back into Logic and I'm going to make two external MIDI tracks. I'm going to send each of these into Ableton to control the Ableton instruments. So I could just um, play into them myself, but I don't have my MIDI keyboard with me, so I'm going to pick some MIDI data from the loop browser. Um, for the piano, I'll look at the classical piano MIDI parts. Um, how about classical piano left one? I'm going to turn the volume down because it might be quite loud. Okay, it's a little annoying, but it'll work. And uh, maybe for the second one, uh, classical piano right one. Let's see what happens there. Okay, so well, we won't we won't hear anything from this now, um, because it's just uh, it's not being sent anywhere. So what we need to do is select the first uh, track that we just created. We can close out of the loop browser now. Select the first track that we created. Go to the library view. Ableton Live, and I'm going to select the piano. Now, for the second track that we created, I'm going to do the same thing, Library View, Ableton Live, and I'll select the other keys. Okay, so now we still won't hear anything, but if we loop this first part, we should expect, if we go to Ableton, to see it receiving the MIDI data um, from these two instruments. So. There they are, um, and to hear these, we need to bring this audio back into Logic. So to do that, we go to the Mix view, and we need to create some auxiliary tracks to bring the audio in on. So we go Option, New Auxiliary Track, and if we wanted them both to come in on this one track, uh, we could select Ableton Live, Mix Left Right, and bring the fader up. So that's going to be both of these instruments on one track. If we want them to come in on separate tracks, which is probably more ideal, uh, we can create a second auxiliary track. And I'm going to make the input for this one bus 3, 4. And for the second one, I'm going to select different buses. It doesn't matter which ones you, you use, Ableton Live bus 5, 6. Um, just make sure you use different ones and you keep track. So this is going to be the glass piano. It's always good to name things. And I'll say uh, from Ableton. And the other one is debt keys from Ableton. Okay, so now um, this audio will be coming in on these two channels. If we go to Ableton, 
and send it to those places, right? So we got to go to audio two and on the glass piano, I'm going to send it to rewire out and under that select three, four. And then I'll do the same on the keys here. So I'm going to send that out to rewire out and five, six. Now, if I go back to Ableton, I should see it coming in on these channels. Now we have independent control of the glass piano and at keys. So we can mix them as we want. Um, and you might notice that the uh, auxiliary in, um, is the auxiliary channels are only showing up here on the mix view. You might uh, want them on the arrangement view. To do that, you just need to select them and press Control T. So I'll do that on each of them. Okay. Now they're both over here. And uh, if you um, one other thing is that if you don't want to be running Ableton while using these instruments. If you want to have this audio bounced into Logic, what you need to do is create a region. So you use the pencil tool. I press T and then P to select the pencil tool. And you can create a region for each of them. And then back to the pointer tool. I'm going to stretch that as long or as short as you want. And uh, bounce in place. So I'm going to right click, select bounce in place and press OK for each of them. Now the audio from Ableton is here and here. And I no longer, if, if I am done with Ableton, I, I don't need to have it running uh, to hear audio on this project. So I can close out of Ableton. I'm not going to save that because it's just an example. Uh, and I can remove that channel and that channel and maybe I don't even want to keep the MIDI data anymore because I'm committing to this audio. I'm really happy with it. Okay, so now I just have that. Ableton's not running at all and I have the audio in Logic. So I hope you find this helpful and, uh, and you can use all those sounds that you like in Ableton um, in Logic Pro now. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.